then. Let's turn in our Bible quickly. And we're going to start in our Bible re teaching today. And we've been talking about the person of Jesus. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 in verse 24. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. And in this teaching, I have been talking about the person of Jesus. You know, and the reason I'm talking about this is this. Is this. Um, a lot of, it's difficult to love who you do not know. It's difficult to love who you do not know. So, you'll find that a lot of Christians, they, they say God loves me, but it doesn't really hold substance. And the reason why is that, so when they feel it, God loves me. Then when they don't feel it, then God doesn't love me. And the reason why is that they don't know the depth of love. You know, oh, she's here right now, right in front of me. And uh, I, I imagine that maybe this is just a story, not real life story. He offended his, his wife. And uh, the wife went to Singapore. And they couldn't sort things out. And normally, you know, he and the family, they will fly first class. But he got so troubled about the, the disconnect that they have. He squeezed out time from, from his job and traveled to Singapore to meet the wife. And went to meet the wife. It was a surprise visit. And the wife said, oh, I thought the, 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 uh, all the flights are booked out. He said, they were all booked out. As a matter of fact, I got economy. You know, and the wife said, why did you virtually come? He said, I just came to make peace with you. I, I couldn't live in Nigeria for the next, you know, for the next one week just knowing that we're not fine. He said, I just came to say I'm sorry. And as soon as I say that tomorrow, I'm going back again. How would the wife feel? Wow, this man really loves me. Because love is not something you say, it's something you demonstrate. So when people say God loves me, the reason, and I'm saying so because it's a big challenge for Christians to rest in the fact that God loves them. When you hear them pray, they pray from the premise as if God is their enemy. They pray, see, the God, the God many Christians serve is like snake and other God. He's like, do me, hey, hey, he's, he's hiding. Sometimes he do you good, sometimes he do you bad, sometimes he's hiding. But the reason why is that a lot of Christians don't know on the inside that God loves me. So when life feels good, God loves me. When life doesn't feel good, God doesn't love me. When I get married, God loves me. If I don't find someone to marry, he doesn't love me. If I get a big testimony, he loves me. If I don't get a big testimony, he doesn't love me. If my child is fine, he loves me. If my child is not fine, he doesn't love me. If I get fired, he doesn't love me. If I get a job, he loves me. Your God is not schizophrenic. He doesn't go up and down. And write this down. Only mature Christians measure the love of God by the happenings around them. Only immature Christians measure the love of God by the happenings around them. In fact, if you're married, if you want to judge how your partner loves you by their actions, uh, you're going to be in trouble. Because sometimes they will really show it. Then sometimes they will not show it. Then sometimes they will walk against it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Matthew chapter 13. I want to show you this. This, this. this is a bit connected to my teaching, but not the center of it. Verse 24. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. I just want to show you how Satan really attacks people with just all these thoughts. Matthew 13, verse 24. The Bible says, And Jesus put to them another parable and said, the kingdom of God is like unto a man which soweth good seed in this field. He says, but when men slept, when men were not conscious, what happened? His enemy came and sowed tears amongst the wheat and went away. And the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit. Then the tears also appeared. And the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did we not sow good food in this field? Where are the tears come from? And he said, an enemy has done this. You know, sometimes as Christians, something could happen in your life that you didn't pray about. And it's amazing that for you to just step back and say, this could be a fear. 
But what happens to most people is this. When people see those things, for some reason they attribute that God has done something. Meanwhile, God knows nothing about it. And what you don't know is this. As we go through life, if you're not careful, Satan uses the experiences and all of those things to sow terrible seeds in our hearts. Terrible. I said in the last service, do you know that, and, and I'm going to say this carefully here, if you have a parent that died of cancer, the likelihood of you having cancer is very high. And not because of just the genetics of what the doctor said. The reason why is that in the process of caring and being with that person that had cancer you love, Satan will talk, take that seed and put it in your heart. So much so that as soon as you feel something in your breast, you say, hey, this I start with my mother. Because, because the seed was sown. If you grow up with, if you grow up as a single parent, and some of you have single parent, some of us are single parents here, and some of you will grow as you know you 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 grew from that background. The tendency for your child to have a struggling, or for you to have a struggling marriage, is very high. It's not just a, about this and that. It's the fact that that seed is right there. You wouldn't even know it. The Bible says, "Why the enemy slept, the enemy why men slept, the enemy came." And sowed seeds. The reason why I believe that failure is very difficult, easy in Nigeria is this. All around us is failure. So you smell, you touch, you taste it. So the easiest thing to reduplicate is what? Is failure. So this is how everybody is. Let me show you an example. Can you, can you help me, sir? Can you show me? This is how everybody is. If this glass is your mind, what Satan does is that he puts a little bit of poison. Just a little and this is what Christians do. When they post a little bit of poison, instead of you to deal with the roots, you'll be dealing with the fruits. You'll be dealing with, why am I coming? Why am I delayed in pregnancy? Why am I delayed in childbirth? Why is my job not going for it? Those are the fruits. There is a root. The breakthrough is an internal job. Some people, you know, I was speaking to a certain lady and she's about 40 there about. I'm hoping to do this course i pray god gives me the time for all the singles maybe you know a three month course i hope i can find the time to really help because when you talk to them i'm like you know i'm like you're single and as we're going to talk to her i said that I, I said the, the vibe i feel i get from you as i talk to you is this you don't really think that any great man will settle with you that you think that you just hope you find someone he said yes i said why and as we began to talk she began to talk to me about how she was raped by our best family friend. He says, since that time, I just felt it was worthless. And what's it? See, it's not just the rape. The rape became what? The incidents that Satan used to put what? The poison in her. You know, many of you, it was a loss of profit in business that Satan used to put poison in you and say, you can never succeed in life. You have lost money. And who is a good businessman that has not lost money before? None. And you, I'm saying so because where do you get this impression that God doesn't like you? It's something that happens in your life that makes you feel because you prayed at some point and it didn't happen. And this poison entered into your mind that God doesn't love you. The challenge is this. The event is gone, but you're still carrying the poison. You're still carrying the poison that God doesn't love me. And because you're carrying the poison, the poison finds its way into more aspects of your life. Someone says, how do we do with this poison? This is how you deal with it. You can't remove it because it's inside. So how do you deal with it? This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this, that we are cleansed by the washing of the word, which is water. We are cleansed by the washing of water, which is the word of God. So if this is the poison, this is a simple thing you do. You just take the word, which is water, and just start pouring it in. And when you pour it in, the first thing you notice is that those thoughts are not as strong as they used to be. Those thoughts that says that, you know, some of you, some of you, those thoughts that says that you can't amount to anything, your business cannot succeed, they become diluted. But those thoughts are dilution. Just keep, think, keep pouring. As you keep pouring, you just see the thoughts. You keep pouring, you keep pouring, you keep pouring, you keep pouring, you keep pouring. It looks as if it's not there, but it's still there. You go for more word, and what happens again? You keep pouring again. You keep pouring. You keep pouring, you keep pouring, you keep pouring, you keep pouring, you keep pouring. Excuse me, where was the poison inside? 
The challenge with most Christians is that this takes a process. Christians don't like process. They love magic. Start today, do tomorrow. But you must remember, this challenge you've had has stayed for 40 years. Many of you, this is how you have fear inside. And you need to keep loading faith inside until the whole of faith can displace the fear. You, you keep loading faith until the whole of faith can displace the fear. The negative thoughts you have, the negative beliefs you have, you keep loading it. You, you know the thing, that, you know what I'm saying this? Because when you talk to Christians when they're in church, there's something they believe. When they're in trouble, they believe something else. And what they really believe on the inside is what eventually happens. How does a Christian come to the point where you think that God doesn't love you? The only reason why you feel God has abandoned you is because you are interpreting God's love based on situation, based on circumstances, based on things happening around you. So because you had the miscarriage, God doesn't love me. Because you've not gotten your immigration papers, it doesn't love me. Because it doesn't, it doesn't love you. Can you see a little bit farther than that? And how many Christians do you know that they are born again, but they are working with a mentality or belief system that is destroying their faith? A man came to Jesus Christ. He said, my child is so sick. He says, if you can do anything, help us. That's one of the biggest stories I love in the Bible. As soon as, he said, if you can do anything, help us. And Jesus looked at him eyeball to eyeball and said, stop that. He says, if you can believe. Because he was almost going to say, Lord, I've tried everything. If you can just do it, do it if you want to do it. And Jesus Christ said, why are you talking like that? If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Or just Christ saying, if you want me to do it, change the way you think about it. Praise God. The biggest spiritual attack you'll find is not someone calling your name from a shrine. The biggest spiritual attack, it will be inve- it will be invasion of negative thoughts in your mind. You know why? Because once the poison is put inside, it's a part of self-destruction. You are going to use your own hand to destroy yourself. Thank you. So what the devil does is this. He comes to where things are going well and he puts a seed there and he puts a seed there. And you need to ask yourself, is there a seed I'm carrying that I need to overwhelm with God's word? And someone says, how will I know I'm carrying a seed? The easy way you will know is this. What fruit are you bearing? If there's a kind of fruit that you do not like, it's because there's a seed you didn't plant there. Someone says, how do I know if I'm carrying a wrong seed? The tears is there. If there's a fruit in your life, that you do not like. The reason why is that a certain seed has been planted inside. Glory to God. And that's why in this teaching, in this teaching, I'm teaching about Jesus Christ. You know what I'm teaching about Jesus Christ? Because you'll be amazed all the nonsense religion has taught about Jesus. They almost want to make us relate with Jesus as if he's not, he's not God. And they'll say, well, he's God. But you need to know about Jesus because people know about Jesus from a sense of rumor. And fathers, if you're here and you're wondering, I, I want a message on breakthrough. How will you explain who Jesus is to your own child when he asks you questions? Mothers, how will you explain? And he says, Mom, they say Jesus Christ is God. How is he God? How will you explain that to him? And once the foundation is not rich, that child is going to have trouble. Some of you, when I hear you, your children pray, all you teach them is as if God is a gimmick, is a genie. Just give me something. You've not told them about the God that you serve. It's almost as if they're serving God in darkness. Why is it important to know about Jesus Christ? Everybody look up here, please. Because when I read about the story of the children of Israel in the wilderness, you know what I notice? Every time they had a trouble, it was a certain revelation of Jesus Christ that brought them solution. I'll give an example. When they got to the rock, when they were thirsty and there was no water, they came to Moses and said, give us water. What did, what, what did Moses do? God told Moses, hit the rock. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that Christ is the rock. So in the time of thirst, guess who they found? Christ, the rock. When water was bitter in, the, in Mara, water was bitter. Maybe you have a bitter marriage. Maybe you have a bitter business. Moses said the water is bitter. God told him, he said, take the, he said, take the tree. Take the tree and put in the water. Who is on the tree? Christ was the one that was found on the tree. Glory to God. When snakes came to bite them, the Bible says fiery serpents were biting them. You know what the Bible says? God, 
God told Abraham, Moses, he said, make up a brazen serpent. Jesus Christ told the Pharisees in Sadducee, he says, I am that brazen serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness. It was also Christ. He says, there's something about looking to Christ that gives you solution. I know that you want breakthrough, but listen to me, all breakthrough is in Christ. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Last week, we explained what it meant when we say Jesus Christ, that Jesus was more than a prophet. We explained that Jesus was more than what? A priest. We explained that Jesus was more than an angel. If you read the book of Hebrews, that's the, that, that's the whole story. Hebrews began to talk about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1, that Jesus was superior to an angel. He says too, because some people believe that Jesus is an angel. Jesus is not an angel. Jesus is God. He's more than an angel. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, he said, to which of the angels did he say, fall and worship me? He said, just the son of God. In fact, Hebrews says this, God said to my God. Are you listening to me? He said, God said to my God. It was the father saying to God the son. So says, is Jesus God? Jesus is God. How do I know that? Even Satan knows, knew that. How do I know? Satan asked Jesus Christ, tempted Jesus Christ, and just told Satan when he was tempted, he says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Who was he referring to? He was referring to himself that Satan, I made you. Don't tempt me. If it was a lie, Satan would have said, hey, you just lied. But the reason Satan kept quiet was because Satan knew that Jesus is God. So we began to establish that Jesus is God. But not only is Jesus called God, Jesus is also man. So says, that's very confusing. And, and you know, so says, why are you saying all of these things? The reason why is that I know a lot of Christians that do not understand what they believe. Jesus is man, but Jesus is also God. Ice is water, and water is ice. Ice is water. And water is also ice. Jesus is God, but is also man. So someone says, when you know, many of you think that when Jesus Christ walked on earth, it was like not normal. See, he was God, but he shifted himself and put away his godliness and began to walk as man. Why did he do that? So was Jesus fully man? Let's read the Bible. First Timothy chapter 2. Oh wow. First Timothy chapter 2. Let's read the Bible. This is very powerful this morning. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Look at what the Bible says. <laughs> let's read. One to go. I want you to read. One to go. There's what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What did he call him? The what? The man Christ. Was he a man? Yes. It says the man Christ Jesus. He's man. Wow. First Timothy 3.16, just the next chapter, just the next chapter. Look at that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at that. This is good. This is good. I love this. First Timothy 3.16. He, see, <laughs> look at this. The Bible says this, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God was what manifest in the flesh. God became, God took man's nature so that man can take God's nature. Did you see why God became man? God took, God took man's nature so that man can take God's nature. No wonder Peter said, we are partakers of the divine nature. He says, we are partakers. Someone says, how can we command things to happen? Uh-uh. When Christ came, he took man's nature so that we can take divine nature and we can command and speak in the name of Jesus. How can we command the tumor to disappear? Because we have the divine nature. How can we command things to change? Because we have divine nature. Glory to God. Revelation, sorry, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 15. Is Jesus man? Was Jesus man? Yeah, because so, so will come and say, eh, hey. sister, no. It's just Christ man. He said, mm -hmm. man, just a worshiper more. Either he's man or he's not man. I just a worshiper more. So, so sometimes you will come in contact with a very logical person in your office. Born again. You know how we normally do? We'll just brag a door away. He said, this thing you believe, come sit down. Come and prove to me the Bible. He said, please, I'm a Christian. That's all I know. That's why when Christians have tough times, because they don't know what they believe, 
it shakes. Christians will move to Canada. Once they see better life, they forget the Bible. Because they didn't know God for God. They knew him as a way of survival. The God Africans serve is the God that helps in trouble. So when there's no trouble, because of change of passport, they forget God. Praise God. That's the God Africans have. Father, give me this. Father, give me that. Father, give me this. So, one should change passports. And there's no need for Father, give me something. Because you have health. There's health insurance. There's social this. There's council flat. There's provision for this. I mean, a lady was telling me, she said, in, I, I didn't want to tell you this. By the time she told me how nice it was in Canada, she said, in Canada, I mean, if you don't have a job for just having three kids, you get $2,400 every month. I said, without job. What are you not praying for? Two thousand five hundred dollars is how much Nigerian money? One point six. What are you praying for? People that have job in our country, that enter traffic. How much do they get? So being what you are still waking up in the morning. Ah, my promotion, next level prayer. My father, my father, my father, my father. <laughs> the person said, my father has answered now, praise God. So that's why you see people, they were, when they were in Africa, they were very prayerful. They were very prayerful. But as soon as life, even those in Africa, as soon as they become richer, their church attendance drops, the fasting drops. Because all of a sudden, the Jesus they knew is the Jesus that gives things, not the person of Jesus. Today, I want to introduce you to the person of Jesus. See, let me tell you something. The reason why you, you come for things from Jesus, you don't know him. When you know him, you will value him more than his gifts. You, you, Zacchaeus was a billionaire. He was a billionaire rogue. He used to steal from people. The moment the angels was coming, he went to climb on a tree. What did he meet? Jesus said, come down. I will meet you in your house today. Jesus has never preached to him. He said, from today, all that I've stolen, I will give four times back. Because something had changed about that person, Jesus. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Some people say, um, we pray in Jesus' name, we pray in Gabriel's name. No, they're not the same. Jesus is not an angel. He said, if it just is slow, we will use angel Gabriel. They are not the same. They say, we'll not ask Mary to please help us appeal to Jesus. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let's love and respect our Holy Mother. But don't give her the assignment that is not our own. I'm saying so because many of you now, you will see born again, will just meet a Jehovah weakness. They cannot sit down and argue scripture. They just be speaking in tongues. You might say, calm down, speak English. Let's look at the from, <laughs> from the Bible you have, the German will confuse you. Say, hmm. And I said, you know what? This thing is a mystery book. He says, well, you know, this is a mystery book. This is a mystery book. You cannot, what you have said, I understand, but this Bible, you know, the way you interpret it is very different. Because you cannot sit down to understand scriptures. Question, was Jesus a man? If he was a man, let's know he's a man. See, if you're a man, there are things that man do. Then if he's a man, why was he a man? Show us from the book. Let's look at the Bible. So we saw one scripture. The Bible says, there's one meditator between man and God. The man what? Christ. So the Bible called him man. When you get to heaven, you will see the man Jesus. That's where I'm going to. When you get to heaven, you will not see 24 feet. That's not how human beings look. You will see Jesus 6 feet something. That's how you're going to see him. The man Jesus. That's how you're going to see him. Because the Bible says, you will not see him in, in, in thunder and lightning. No, you're going to see the man Jesus. When Stephen was dying, he said he saw Jesus stand up from the throne. You see the man Jesus. But question, was he a man and why was he a man? To show you was a man. Let's go. Glory to God. Was he a man? Yes, he was a man. How do I know? Luke chapter 4 verse 1. He was hungry. God is not hungry. It's man that gets hungry. 
The Bible says after he had fasted, he was what? He was hungry. Number two, to show that he was fully a man, he was tired. John chapter 4. The Bible says when he was at the pool, when he was at, when he was at, the, um, at, at the well of Jacob, he was tired when he was speaking. Does God get tired? God doesn't get tired. For him to be hungry, he has digestive system. Oh, so far, God's internal and um, small, what do you call it? Small intestine and large intestine. They are all working for him to be what? Hungry. For him to be tired, he has nervous system. Glory to God. The third thing is this. Jesus cried. He had emotions. He felt pain. He cried many times. He, he cried because of Lazarus was dead. He felt the pain. He cried when he lost Lazarus. But on the cross, as they were beating him, he was feeling the pain. He was crying. He was not making it to the, uh, he, he beats me, I'm not. No. He was in tears. When they whipped him, I, I lost. I, 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 this is God crying. I wanted to see what Christ did for us. They told him, Hold! They took the whip. You know, the whip is not just like Koboko. No, those things had like metal claws attached to it. So that when they beat you, the metal will tear your skin. What, when you say, someone says, what passion of Christ? What is that? Passion, if you know what happened, it's from the death of Jesus that the English word excruciating came from. They had to coin an English word to describe the pain people feel at crucifixion. They tore his back. He felt it. How do I know he was? How do I know he was? He was man. He was tempted. How do I know he was man? He slept. He was not. He didn't just sleep. He was a deep sleeper. Jesus was a deep sleeper. Waves was carrying boats up and down, up and down. Jesus was fast asleep. If you're a deep sleeper, you found your model. Praise God. Don't try it in church. Amen. <laughs> he was a deep sleeper. He was hungry. He was a deep sleeper. He was tired. He suffered. But the question is that why did he do this? Let's read through scriptures and we'll close. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Oh, glory to God. So, what, the question is that why did God become man? Number one. Man sinned, man must, pay, man must pay the price. That's what it is. Man sinned, man must pay the price. Please, Chisholm, come. Is your wife here? Where's she? Where's your wife? Yeah, come. Two of you, come. Your husband speaks so lovely of you. All the time. Look, your wife come. Your wife has eaten in a restaurant. She has eaten below 50,000. It's time to pay. You now say, let her go. Can she go? She can go. Who will I hold for 50,000? Does he have to eat for me to hold him? Why am I holding him? He has taken her place. Jesus did not sin. You were the one that owed. He came and took your place. So, all of a sudden, when he now searched his wallet, and there was no 50k there, who will wash plate? Who will suffer? Because Auntie has gone. Yes or no? So, the reason why Jesus Christ took our place was because, not because he sinned himself. The reason is this. Because we were let go. Someone must pay the price. He took responsibility for our sin. What a love. So just imagine, even when she was there, he realized that, ah, honey, my ATM card is not 50k. Wouldn't I say, hold her? No. The man would say, no, no, no. Whatever you want to do to her, do to me. Because I love her. 
Thank you, Jesus. See what the Bible says. Let's read it from the Bible. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. See what the Bible says. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same, that through that he may destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them through the fear of death where all their lives subject to, death, to bondage. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, he behaved himself like to be made unto his brethren. Why? 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 That he may be a merciful and faithful priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of men. That in all, he himself, he himself had for in for in that he himself had suffered being tempted, is able to succor them that are tempted. My God. Are, are you hearing this? That there's a scripture you need to see. We need to balance it. Hebrews chapter 4, just two chapters after. Oh wow. Verse 15. Are you ready? Are you? <laughs> Somebody say Hallelujah. Verse 14 and 15. Let's go back a little. Verse 14. Just I want to get catching on it. I want to catch in on it. Hey, it says, Seeing therefore we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Someone says, don't let, don't let's go deeper into that. He said, Let us hold to the comprof- to let us hold fast to our profession. Okay. Verse 15. Let's read together. One to go. For we have not a high priest, which cannot what? Uh-huh. But was in all point what? And yet what? Give me the message version. Give me the message version. Hey, 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 hey. This is what I love about Jesus Christ. This is what makes me love Jesus Christ. Hey, 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 hey. See what the message is. It says, and we'll read from the middle. Verse 15 is in the middle. It says, we don't have a, a priest who is out of touch with our reality. You don't understand. When people go and see Babalawa and Yalao, they will not be explaining what contract means because they don't know what contract means. They are in the village. When people say, God says that, I don't want to be the God you pray to. I don't understand what you feel. So, when you say, Lord, I'm single at this age. Jesus Christ, I was also single. He was single. At 33, he never dated. So, when you say, God, you don't know how I feel. How I feel. Jesus Christ says, are you sure about that? When someone broke your heart, do you know how many people's hearts were broken around Jesus Christ? What Jesus Christ did for people? When you're a contractor and they wanted to give you the contract and they moved to somebody else, Jesus Christ said, I know what that meant. Jesse wanted to give us furniture contracts for the temple. But all of a sudden, the Pharisees had to use their connection to collect it and move it to somebody else. He said, Joseph, my father, was very angry. Daddy came back home that day. He was broken. He knows. And why did he go through that? He went through that so that when you go through it, he can feel. So when you say God does not understand you, do you know what you are talking about? Without your invitation, he came to earth. He says, I don't just want to answer their prayers. I want to answer it because I understand. I want to be touched by their pain. I want to be touched by their infirmity. I want to be touched by them. Someone says, do you just understand my immigration problem? Jesus, immigration problem, he understood. Because he jacked from Jerusalem to Egypt. <laughs> Read the Bible. He was in Egypt for 10 years until he got passport. He came back. That's when I added, praise God. You are saying, Father, ah, my immigration document. Just because I say, I understand what it means. You know, when G- think of, you know, many of you say, Oh, you know, I don't know if God loves me. Think about it. The only person in the world, everybody pay attention to this. You need to catch this. The only person in the world that could choose his parents where he will be born chose to be born in the manger. Why? He wanted to taste poverty for you and I. He chose. Listen, if you could choose where you'll be born, would you choose this country? Many of you will never choose your parents. Yes or no? Oh, 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 my God. I wish your dad was here. (laughs) I wish your mom was here. (laughs) 
How can I choose a surname that has no relevance? But look at Jesus Christ. He could have chosen anybody. Who did he choose? Joseph and Mary. Why would they have me? In a manger, not in a hospital. And he did that so that I can... So when you say that, life is so hard. Jesus Christ said, I know what it feels like. I was born in a manger. Were you not born in a hospital? He was born in a manger. He, he, he went so low for you and I. And you think when you have financial problems, when you have family problems, did he have family problems? He had family problems. His father came to look for him one day. He said, they forgot him. You said, I, I suffered rejection. They forgot him for two weeks. They had gone home, traveled, went back to London. They now remember in London, Jesus Christ is back in Nigeria. They now came back. And I said, you know, I, I have um, childhood trauma. Jesus had childhood trauma. Jesus had child. He said, you, you, you said Pastor Black, if you know that my background, he said, you don't know, you, okay, you don't know my background. I have a prince. You know, some of you, you forget your, your children in school. They forgot him on vacation. No, no, no. How bad is that? You come back to your country. And Mary says, where's Jesus? Just said, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And they are journey two weeks. Someone said there's no job. Should Jesus Christ tell you sometimes you will stay in capital shop for one month? Nobody has come to ask for capital's work. Nobody had come to ask for furniture. Nobody had come to price everything. So every time you say, Lord, I don't have a job, Jesus says, says I know what you feel. Every time you say, Lord, I'm single, nobody has toasted me. Jesus Christ said, I know what you feel. Every time you say, Lord, see what my parents did. See my background. See the, the traumatic stress of a child. Jesus says, I know what you feel. Every time he says, as a businessman, there's no capital. Jesus Christ says, I know what you feel. He says, that's why I came. To feel what you feel. So that I can be a merciful. Read it again. Hebrews chapter 4. Then read it again. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm talking. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let's go. Hebrews chapter 4. My God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 2. Chapter 2 first. Chapter 2. Verse 17. He says, Wherefore in all things it behave like unto his brethren, that he may be what? That, he says, the reason why he came in the flesh was because he wanted to be the God that can tell human experience. That he can be merciful. You know when you've not been through what I've been through and you're advising me, you know you're saying all the rubbish. It's like when women are having children and the husband says, honey, we're together. <laughs> that lady said, we're together in what? <laughs> and it's the truth because someone contributed. That's all the man did, he contributed. Oh, Jesus did not say, we're together. He entered it for you. So, you know what that does to you? When you pray, someone says, I'm raised by a single mother or father. What about Jesus Christ? He was called the son of Mary, never the son of Joseph. They say, your child is illegitimate. What about Jesus Christ? He was the only one that was born of the mother. All that was the mother and father. Someone said, they betrayed me. Didn't they betray Jesus Christ? Judas Iscariot, his employee, took bribe and betrayed him. He said, he said, what, what? He said I don't belong to self because what people have done to me. Have they done what they did to you? And he didn't have to go through that. He went through it so that he can learn. So that when you pray and say they betrayed me, God said, I know the perfect solution because I've been there. Which God has done this for other people before? Which God? Which God? They took John, his cousin, his first cousin, Elizabeth's child, killed Elizabeth's child. He lost his cousin. Jesus knew what loss was. He said, I lost my dad since that time. I just said, God! And when they lost his cousin, he didn't say, he didn't go, God, why didn't you wake him up? That was it. John is, oh, you, do you remember that John Bassett was his cousin? He died and died though. They didn't wake him up. 
Because sometimes you lose somebody, say, God, where are you? And just Christ said, when I lost John too, me too, I felt that way. Praise God. Debtors are asking for money. They ask Peter. They say, Peter, your master has not paid his debt. His taxes, where is it? They ask Peter. They told Peter. They say, money is due. Many of you are hiding from God, hiding from God. When you say, and let me tell you, the beauty of it is that when you pray, you can just say, Jesus, you know what I feel. You are a merciful priest. Because you know, do what you will do. I trust you. What is the use of knowing if it's not going to fix it? Let's pray.